said, huh, we have a problem. This Pastor Eccles was supposed to be the preacher at 11 o'clock this morning. And she said, for some reason, he ain't going to be there. And uh, so we went around all these convoluted uh, exercises to figure out what to do. And finally, uh, the stranger of the United Methodist Church and the connection to the nature of it uh, called uh, Stephen O. Spurlock, who's the district superintendent. And he called me back. I don't know what changes he had to make to his schedule. But the superintendent's going to be preaching at 11 o'clock today. So uh, that, that is one of the strengths of the denomination. You can reach out that late at night and get somebody here the next morning. And it is a joy that there's not that so again. And it's a good thing there. So we do we're going to welcome uh, Reverend Spurlock this morning at 11 o'clock service. But he wants to have another joy. Jasmine had her baby Friday. Jasmine had her baby Friday. All right. There's another joy. I'll tell you what. Don't drink the water, ladies. Don't drink the water around here. There's something that I'm telling you. Well, there we go. Late March, April. Find out definitely tomorrow is her first doctor's appointment. Well, it's great. Here, new joy, new life. Yeah, yeah. Celebration. Yeah, but she's not in Georgia. He's in Georgia now. Yeah, they're in Georgia. Well, if there's... If if there any other joy, to, how about concerns? Uh, we like with uh, Tom. He's he's recovering, but and for you, since you have to take care of him, we'll lift you all our prayers. Any other uh, concerns? Yeah, I, mean, I think I mentioned before about five more details. There's two young people from Burn Parish and down Children's Hospital in New Orleans. And there's one little girl, and it's Isabella Vincent. She's only four, and they probably call her Izzy. She's the granddaughter of one of my clients, and uh, they've been. Grandparents have been down with her since April, and she has really, really, really severe kind of leukemia. She's really desperate, so a beautiful little girl. And then there's a young man who's 11, 15, and they, he also has leukemia. He's down there at Children's Hospital as well, so uh, those families and that. And I did not realize how difficult it was, but the grandmother said she's been down there with her daughter since April. So they basically live in a hotel in New Orleans for so how many months that is. Yeah. That's a huge burden for that's lift them up. Also, I want to mention uh, Geneva Martinka. Uh, her father passed away Wednesday uh, evening. Uh, she's a member of the church and she, over in Texas. Uh, I did contact her. Uh, she just wanted the church to know about that. If you lift that family up in prayers, they, they had this celebration of life yesterday. And so, again, we need to be with that family there. So, they're. Again, so, that mother passed away Friday. Yes. Well, and, then, and then, if you a lot of us know in the community, uh, Judge Jim Mitchell passed away Friday. And so again, there's a lot of joys, but there's a lot of joys of people going home and we're like here and that's where the soul begins. So, yes. And everything's going good for her. She's getting better and better. That's good. Anybody else would like to lift up? Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Again, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity here. Father, we lift up the great joys of a new birth, a new life. What a wonderful celebration it is to see a newborn in a mother's arms. Father, we just ask you to continue to bless those families, uh, Jasmine and her family, her little baby, as well as the Eccles, as they welcome a new life into their family. Father, we also know that there are times that it's just a burden sometimes we feel, but we have to go through that. And these little children that are facing leukemia, I just ask you to lift them up with their families up. And that's a hard thing to watch a child be sick. And you want to take that pain away. And just like you had to sit there and watch your son die on that cross, and you'd much rather would have taken his place. But there was a purpose for that. And again, so I just ask you to give them strength and lift them up and increase their faith. And Father, these members of our community and members of our church who have lost loved ones or went home with you, we know that they're celebrating with you, but we're still here. We're still sorrowful about that. Father, I ask you to get rid of our pain and let us seek clear understanding. Father, I ask that you be with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. We seek to ask in your name. Amen. Well, this morning's scripture that I'm going to share with you this morning comes from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 14 through 21. And I'll be reading from the Common English Bible. As a result, we aren't supposed to be infants any longer. Who can be tossed and blown around by every wind that comes from teaching with deceitful scheming and the tricks people play to literally mislead others? 
Instead, by speaking the truth with love, let's grow in every way into Christ, who is the head. The whole body grows from him and is joined and held together by all the supporting ligaments. The body makes itself grow in that it builds itself up with love as each one does its part. So I'm telling you this, and I insist on it in the Lord. You shouldn't live your life like the Gentiles anymore. They base their lives on the pointless thinking, and they are in the dark in their reasoning. They are disconnected from God's life because of their ignorance and their closed hearts. They are people who lack all sense of right and wrong and who have turned themselves over to doing whatever feels good and to practicing what sort of corruption along with greed. But you didn't learn that sort of thing from Christ since you really listened to him and you were taught how truth is in Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Well, like I said, I have been on vacation past week there, and so we had a wonderful time in our time share, but somewhere by the time we left on a Thursday, my back went out on me, so I couldn't do a lot of the activities the girls were doing, so one day they went shopping, and so I gave them my credit card, but I stayed at the, I know it was a bad thing, but, uh, but I gave them that, but anyway, they were there, but I was trying to get my back loosened up, and as I was walking, I just walked on the, uh, the area where our resort is, and if you've ever been out in the Texas Hill Country, I think that's one of those beautiful places there is. You know, I think that was one of my, I think that God created that. But out there, there's a lot of uh, ledges and cliffs, and that's really rocky. And as I looked at the trees, and I, Terry, I think you've got pictures of the trees, don't you? Yeah, I see. The trees out there, this is, this is a water oak. I don't know if you can see it real well or not, but it's here in Louisiana, you know, trees grow straight up and then they branch out. And if you were to cut a tree here, you can get all kinds of wood, rip of wood and something. This year, you'd have to cut several of those trees to get one rig of wood. But that's water oak, and it's, you see the trunk's very short and very small, and it branches out very quickly. And then the other thing, Kevin, to show a couple of those pictures there, these are some of the roots that are in that rock of those trees. And they have crisscrossed each other, but sooner or later they find a place in that rock, and they go right down to it, to the water. And you cannot pull those away. Those are really embedded in that stone. It's almost like they become part of the rock in there. So again, I thought about that, and as I was thinking about my message this morning, rooted in love, I think so that's one of the things we have to look at here this morning is, you know, how deep a root grows on a tree can depend on three things, water, oxygen, and the compaction level of the soil it was able to get through and everything like that. And again, it goes to, you can go to great depths. In fact, they found tree roots that have, are 20 feet deep if they've had all the optimal conditions. And so this morning, as we talk about being disciples and members of a church, we need to first really understand what it is Paul is saying. And I think one of the things that looks at, if you look at the very first part of that from chapter 4, in the very first part there, I'd like to read a few of these scriptures from you to kind of get a better idea of what our scripture said. It says, Therefore, as a prisoner of the Lord, I encourage you to live as people worthy of the call you receive from God. Conduct yourself with all humility, gentleness, patience. That's why the scripture says, when he climbed up the heights, he captured prisoners and gave gifts to people. What does the phrase he climbed up mean if it doesn't mean that he has gone down into the lower reaches of the earth? The one who went down is the same one who climbed up above all heavens so that he might fill everything. And again, some he gave his apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors. His purpose was to equip God's people for the work of serving and building up the body of Christ until we all reach the unity and knowledge of God's Son. God's goal is for us to become mature adults, to be fully grown, measured by the standard of the fullness of Christ. You see, what Paul's doing is he's calling us as a church to set our roots and to make our roots deeper. Don't just let them sit there on the surface. Don't do nothing to the Lord, but to set your roots deep. And in order for the church to set its roots deep, we as the body of Christ need to each set our roots deep. It's that time when we need to become more professional and more mature in our relationship with one another through our personal growth and the community working together here 
to make mature believers that will continue to contribute to a mature church. And the energy of all that that takes place is supplied by Christ. In Ephesians 4, verse 16, who is the head? The whole body grows from him as it is joined and held together by all supporting ligaments. The body makes itself grow and then it builds itself up with love as each one does its part. You see, just like a little acorn or a seed from a tree that's been picked up by a bird, wherever it's dropped in a particular place, that's where it grows. And we need to understand that we have been dropped in this here particular place to gate roots and have our church grow. You see, each one of us doing our part as the body of Christ will produce fruit. And you say, well, how do we do that, Sharon? How do we do that opportunity of producing fruit? Well, I think the first thing we need to do is what we're talking about right now is put down our roots. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. As a result, we aren't supposed to be infants any longer who can be tossed and blown around by every wind that comes from teaching with deceitful scheming and tricks people play to deliberately mislead others. I have a question for you. I have a couple of them. How did you come to find this church to worship? I don't, you don't have to answer that, but just think about it. How did you come to find this church to worship? How did you come to find this particular service to worship? Some may say, well, I grew up as a Methodist all my life, and I just went to the Methodist church. Uh, some may say, a friend invited me to come and be a part of this. Some may even say that I just, I felt the call to be here. In fact, Russ Black, if you know Russ Black, that's one of his testimonies. He was told, he made it, he said, look, one Sunday he got up, he said, I just knew I had to go to church. And he said, he got on his boots, he got pulled, he came here to church. The rest of history, Russ Black now is an associate pastor in Georgia with a youth group who went to seminary to become an elder in the Methodist church. You see, Russ was dropped here for a short period of time, and he set those roots here. And all of us in here have had a good relationship with the black. All of us in here have grown with, in our relations with each other. And so that's what it takes there. You see, all of us have different backgrounds. I tell you the reason that I'm here, that's because God placed me here. You know, when we came to church here in August 3rd, it'll be 28 years, Sharon, I've been here. And we came to this church, and there was just this feeling that we came across. It was so relaxing, so loving, so wanting us to be a part. But again, I just, I couldn't stop. So Sharon, I felt that was where we needed to be. Now, there are those that like the church shop, and I call them church shoppers. You know, those ones who never seem to find out what they're looking for. The preacher's not who they like. Uh, there's not enough programs they've offered for my family or me. Uh, I don't like the contemporary service. I do like the contemporary service. You know, they're looking for what they want and they not what they can offer the church. And see, I think we need to understand is that even though we may place roots, the one that placed the root the deepest was Christ. And he was the one that we are grabbed to. In John chapter 15, verse eight, one through eight, I am the true vine and my father is the vineyard keeper. He removes any of my branches that don't produce fruit, and he trims any branch that produces fruit so that it will produce even more fruit. You are already trimmed because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. A branch can't produce fruit by itself, but must remain in the vine. Likewise, you can't produce fruit unless you remain in me. I'm the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, then you will produce much fruit. Without me, you can't do anything. If you don't remain in me, you will be like a branch that is thrown out and dries up. Those branches are gathered up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain with me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you want, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified when you produce much fruit in this way, to prove that you are my disciples. Get on vacation, I was... We were, in the evening I was watching the National Geographic program, it was one of these that had these uh, forest rangers, wildlife man guys out, and they were on patrol, they were looking for 
drug activities where they would go into the California forest and they would actually grow uh, big acreages of marijuana. And so this one time they were driving by and they stopped and they pulled these people over and they found in this suburban they had over a hundred little bit of seedling plants, marijuana plants, in the back of the truck. So they pulled them out. And the guy was saying these are considered what we call clone plants. What they did was they took the best branch that would root deep enough and the best that would produce the best seed and they grafted them together. And they actually were the same plant over and over. It was the exact same plant. They cloned that plant. Now, I'm not condoning growing marijuana or any other ill or illegal substance. But again, if we look at it, each one of us was grafted onto a main plant that would be known to produce good product. And so that's where Christ comes in. With his death and resurrection, we are connected to Christ. And we become him and his people see us through him. And in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 15 through 16, Instead, by speaking the truth with love, let's grow in every way into Christ. Who is the head? The whole body grows from him, as it is joined and held together by all the supporting ligaments. The body makes itself grow and then builds itself up with love, as each one of us does its part. Like I said, we all come from different clippings, but once we're through the vine, we produce the same fruit. That fruit is love. Love is the most best fruit we can produce here. And then once we need to do that, we need to be fruitful where we're planted. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 to 24, and so I insist, and God backs me up to this, that there are going to be no one along with the crowd, the empty-headed, mindless crowd. They refuse for long, so long to deal with God that they've lost touch not only with God, but with reality itself. Feel no pain, let themselves go into sexual obsession, addicted to every sort of conversion. But that's not life for you. You are in Christ. My assumption is that you have to pay careful attention to him and been well instructed in the truth precisely as we have seen it in Jesus. Since then, we do not have to excuse of ignorance. Everything, and I do mean everything, connected to the old way of life has to go. It's rotten through and through. Get rid of it, and then take on an entirely new life, a God-fashioned life, a life renewed from the inside and working itself into your conduct as God actually reproduces his character in you. You see, we sometimes have to prune the bad things, even though we're producing as a plant. We have to take the bad things off. Sometimes you prune trees so they're producing more fruit. And Bradford pears, I don't know if you like Bradford pear trees, but I, I like them when they're in the spring, when they're all bloomed out and white. But one of the things I found out, and I found out from Donna, tell me, about a Bradford pear, you don't just prune the tree, the limbs on the outside. You can do that all day. What's gonna happen is to get the best benefit, you've got to prune it from the inside. Those branches that get on the inside, because that's where it will die the quickest, is on the inside. So you go through there, and there are certain ones you can cut, you prune it out that way, and it'll grow out further. You know, we have to prune some of those things in our lives that are not acceptable to God. We've got to get those things out. And as a church, we need to sit down seriously as a body of Christ and say, what it is that's working and producing fruit and what is that's not producing fruit. And if it's not producing, then we need to trim it, prune it out so we can benefit. You know, that's what Angela has been talking to us over this past six months as she's got closer and closer in an idea, and I think you're going to see that taking place here at church. We're really going to take a careful look at what we're doing to see if it's going to be what we need to do. Maybe it's not what this church needs to do. Maybe that's another church's responsibility. Maybe there's something in the church that you feel needs to be done that has never been started before. Now is your time to stand up and say, I'll take that. I'll be that person that will take care of those things. You see, I think that's the biggest thing here is we do all these things, but the primary thing is we do it in love. We don't do it for kudos. We don't do it to make somebody else look bad. We do it because we love one another and we love the church. And the roots that we gather here grow deep in love. Let us pray.
Oh, gracious Father, as we come here this morning, and we ask you to let us be a part of this body of Christ. Let our roots grow deep and strong in that ground that you have us placed right here in this place. And let this church be a testimony of that producing vineyard that you take care of. In Jesus, in your name, amen. And I think now comes a time if you want to make that effort to come forward and place an offering off your plate to show you love. I don't have to. 